Hi, I am Gaurav Jain and in this uh, session we will learn how do we use the call studio element dialog flow. As we understood earlier, this is the flow which is the simplest way to integrate dialog flow uh, voice bot into the call studio. So in this uh, 12.5 release, uh, call studio will have following new elements and you can use this element to create your uh, application uh, which will drive your voice bot so to simplify this uh, integration of uh, dialog flow element we have provided uh, some sample application you can get those sample application in the github uh, url of cvp uh, at this url in github in cisco devnet you can find the sample application for uh, customer voice assistant and there are multiple applications which i provided here we will first look at uh, in this video uh, df audio and df text and uh, you can uh, check out these or these application and get the sample application so let's have a look at uh, what is there in this flow and uh, how would you implement a voice bot so in this element you have certain properties configuration which you have to do so let's uh, try to understand them service account id is the link between your call studio application and your uh, voice bot or the agent which is running in dialog flow so you need to copy that that voice uh, service account id from your dialog flow account we saw this in uh, dialog flow So you can you can see this this is the project id which we are using in dialog flow account which is which we are mentioning in service account id uh, another important field is the audio output true and false so if you set the audio output to true here uh, the dialog flow in bot will do the job of text to speech conversion for you so when you do the recognition in this flow so each of the iteration which happens for dialog flow element your speech will be uh, streamed to google google will do the processing of your speech and do the speech to text conversion process it match it to the intent uh, find the answers what is to be given to the customer and if this uh, variable is set to true then in response you will get the uh, the audio and see and uh, cvp will play that audio while if you set it to false in that case uh, the response will not be audio it will be text and then you need to use uh, text to speech engine to synthesize it separately so there is another example here which is df text in that uh, I have used that example where I, have, where I have set the audio output to false. So in that case, you will have to play that manually. You need to configure your NLP, NLU engine as well as uh, you have to configure ASR or uh, TTS in your uh, uh, configuration. So you need to get the separate key for that. So if you if you are using uh, audio output true, uh, Google will bill you differently. And if you are using audio output false, the bill will be differently. However, you will be uh, charged for a TTS uh, separately. Uh, VVB caches the prompt. So if you are using the text to speech prompt, uh, same prompt multiple time, uh, VVB will cache those those prompt based on the text. So if the text is different, it will be a new cache, but the same prompt will be uh, cached. So you can optimize the performance uh, using that. Okay, so for going forward, there, is, there are parameters like no input timeout. You can set that, no input count, how many times you will ask if the user has not given input. And that count is maintained by using this exit state, no input count. If this count is met, then it will exit from the loop. Uh, in dialog flow recognition if let's say there are you are working in a noisy environment and if you want to uh, if your voice is not getting stopped and you are not getting the answer then you can terminate the speech 
by mentioning this character hash so your output will be terminated the user's out user's output can be terminated by user by pressing this hash key so it is not doing any other kind of uh, dtmf recognition but only this character what you are mentioning in this flow which will be used for the speech termination as a speech termination character uh, next parameter is the initiation text this is the this is a text which will be used by this element to initiate the dialogue with the dialogue flow so when first time this element is hit you need to initiate the dialogue with the, with dialogue flow and this hello text will be sent to dialogue flow and you need to provide a training for dialogue flow agent so that it can understand this keyword and based on that it returns the intent and that intent is returned then dialogue flow will continue from then on because the audio will be returned in that case and uh, this uh, flow will continue in that case however if you are using uh, audio output to false you don't need to bother about this because anyway you are not getting the audio from dialogue flow and you are driving it Uh, you can also mention max input time for how long you can you want to wait for the customer to give give utterance and Also, you can mention the final silence duration that uh, after user stops speaking and uh, After that for how long you want to wait before you give the response to customer So these are the parameters you need to uh, You need to understand in order to implement this uh, element while from the flow point of view there are exit states which are implemented here max no input and done so let's understand how it works max no input is triggered when you hit the maximum number of no input event by the customer and done is when the, you have received the input from the customer which may or may not have matched an intent so when you are done you are you put a decision editor let's say and you check for the intents so there are some new variables which are introduced in uh, this agent which you can have a look and uh, if you, you you can check if the intent is uh, agent transfer let's say or exit then you can handle that and if it is not complete then you continue so is is complete is the variable which is maintaining the state that your inputs for this particular intent is not complete and it will continue to ask uh, the subsequent questions so if it is let's say exit or transfer agent then what we are doing is we are coming out from the loop and then we are proceeding further but if it is not then we are going into the loop so that we ask the subsequent question so your loop keeps going on like this until you are done with the dialogue flow agent and then you exit from here meanwhile also if you are interested in uh, collecting this information or storing the intent and passing this data back to the ICM for the queuing purpose. Uh, you can store the information uh, by using a set value parameter. You can uh, have a look at the sample application. You can store the intent or you can store the utterance what is spoken by customer you can accumulate you can program it the way you want and finally when you have collected those information you can send them as external param and send that data back to the icm and use them accordingly uh, one more thing we should see is the how you create this application the, the global properties the global properties for this is uh, has a new has few new parameters like uh, your adapter uh, should works voice xml gateway adapter should be either cisco dtmf or voice xml 2.1 with cisco dtmf so you should be using uh, these adapters only you cannot use nuance adapter while you are using uh, dialog flow based recognition or uh, asr based recognition another implementation here is a uh, voice name so you should you can get the list of voices supported by google in uh, google's uh, uh, website the references to that is given in the uh, specification guide as well you, uh, the element specification guide uh, in the element specification guide you can also uh, have a look at the properties which we just went through all those properties are mentioned in details there 
However, there are some uh, custom properties also available. Uh, the properties like uh, the payload, if you want to pass some custom payload to, uh, to Dialogflow so that you can use it there, you can pass. So let's say if you have some information in your CRM data which you want to pass to Dialogflow, you can pass it in payload. You can pass the time zone from here or geolocation. Uh, also, if you have some other information like session entity types, so let's say Google, uh, Dialogflow has entity types already defined, but if you want to pass some new entity types based on your uh, local database, you can pass those and uh, Google's API will absorb it. Uh, also, you can enable the sentiment analysis request config. So if you enable this, the response will uh, give you the sentiment status for each query, uh, uh, what you have done with the, with the dialog flow. So for, and uh, another, another parameter is the single utterance. Single utterance is the parameter which you enable where you want uh, Google to do the silence detection. So for every small utterance, uh, the, the silence will be detected at Google. So if you are expecting your user to speak a very long sentence with multiple pauses, then only you can set it to false. But by default, this parameter is uh, enabled. Another thing is the recognition model. The model is the way your uh, recognition is done by the recognition engine, whether you are using the dialogue flow element or you are using the recognition element. So by default, the model when you use the enterprise edition of dialogue flow is set to phone call, which is tuned to give you the best results. But if you are not using enterprise, if you are using standard, you can override this, uh, this value to default or uh, some other model as mentioned in the documentation of uh, uh, Google. So you can override these values. So these custom values which are given here, how do you add it? You can add them in uh, the elements uh, configuration uh, in the voice XML property. So property name and value you can mention here. And going back to the properties, what we were discussing. Yeah, so voice name, as I was mentioning earlier, you can get the list of voices which are supported by Google for TTS. So whether your audio output is true or false, whether you are using uh, TTS for uh, text-to-speech operation separately or you are using audio output to get the output, in both the cases, this value will be honored. And uh, you can use a standard voice or you can use a WaveNet voice, both you can use. Uh, encoding, you should be using always UTF-8. That is what is supported to work in interoperate with the Google in this case. Uh, you should be mentioning the language uh, which you want to use. Uh, languages other than uh, ENUS are subject to the support of TTS by uh, Google's engine in, in case of dialogue flow or in case of recognition engine. So you should match these languages. Uh, we, we will have a separate section where we'll go in detail about the multilingual application and uh, changing this language and other things. So in this, uh, these are the important configuration which you should be taking care of in order to have the global properties. These global properties are mentioned at this level. Some of these properties you may be able to overwrite at the element level as well. Let's say you want to change the voice name, so you can change the voice name later point of time as well. So this is the way you can create a sample application and uh, let's go back to the DF text. There is one more thing I want to highlight there. So in this application, the only difference as I mentioned earlier is you are using the audio output false. And when you do audio output false, you will have to have another element where you will play the prompts which are received from dialog flow so this is the text which is received from dialog flow and you are playing them using prompt and as i mentioned earlier these prompts if they are uh, same prompts uh, which you are using then those will be cached and it will be played from uh, the platform engine and rest of the flow is same in this case uh, the way we used the earlier flow.